Jim, the name is right, right? I'm gonna mute my phone. Whoops. Just bring it over here for rainbow shows. Well, can you mute it? Oh, I just have a little button. I have a little okay. button. You got it. Oh. Jim, do me a favor, though, before I begin, could you make sure that it's shared onto my page and Judy's page, because I don't see anything. Welcome to Renee Marie Strokola. I'm Renee Marie. And this show, both shows are really about entertainment. And Norman was the one that I was talking to. I'm really inspired this show and the, um, let me just let our other guest in really inspired this show because of his passion for our, our mutual passion 
for um, music and entertainment and really bringing joy to everybody. And we, Judy and I were on his and Darren's show um, a while ago, and uh, we just really hit it off and spoke the same language. And we have such a passion for life and for entertainment and and our guests, um, Maureen and Stevie GB, have been on both, all of our telethons. Um, I think all of them since the beginning, right, Judy? All of them since the beginning. Yeah. So um, we're really blessed to have the show. And this show is about just enjoying life and getting into the the joys of life and 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 really just uh, letting go and not thinking about the day to day challenges and and things that we have because life can sometimes be difficult. I will share that right now we are so blessed because um, our Tricky Tray, which is um, this coming Tuesday, um, April 18th at the Cosmopolitan in Wayne has sold out. So Diane Bromberg, has, Stern Bromberg has done an exceptional job with her team to sell out this event. It is, and she has 250 gifts tricky trade gifts that are going to blow people away. I didn't, you know, the truth is that baskets used to be her, her business. So you can imagine the enhancement of the baskets that she has created. Um, it, it's really going to be a wonderful event. And um, John, um, our videographer is coming and he's going to video and take photos and stuff. So we're going to have a whole after show about it, Judy's going to be booking it. Two hours of really re talking about um, revisiting the telethon and really giving kudos to our sponsors who we're so grateful for. And um, so I can just talk forever and ever about that, but I don't want to waste your time. So thank you so much for joining us today. And as always, I'm going to let Judy um, begin the show um, by reading the press that she, of course, always writes and doing does an exceptional job. Um, Judy, take it away. And Jim, if you can open up the screen, I'm not sure if I'm by myself or what's going on. I'd like to welcome all our special guests this morning. Norman Wasserman started Friend Entertainment USA, determined to provide high quality entertainment for nonprofit organizations. He understood great need to make a difference in this world and has been fundraising for nonprofits for 34 years. Norman is known as the music man. Because of the years, he has spent doing fundraising concerts. Music is known as the universal language and Norman is multilingual speaking English and Latin. He is known to be a perfectionist with extremely high standards. Any tribute band or performer he books must meet his rigorous demands for quality and high wattage showmanship. John Botero will be joining us shortly. He's a comedian, promoter, actor from Long Island. He has headlined at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, Catch a Rising Star, and many clubs up and down the East Coast. John has also acted in many films, including Love Again, where he and the cast won awards at the New York Internal Film Awards ceremonies. Stevie GB is an award-winning comedian, actor, and playwright. He has opened for Rob Schneider, Louis Anderson, Lisa Lampanelli, Bobby Collins, Bob Nelson, Uncle Floyd, and music legends like Dion at Westbury Music Fair, Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees, comedians Dennis Miller, Norman MacDonald, and many more. Welcome to Lawn Guyland. Welcome to Lawn Guyland is his critically acclaimed and audience revered one man show. Stevie talks about his journey from Brooklyn to Long Island at the age of 14. He has also portrayed comedian Groucho Marx to rave reviews. Stevie also authored two one-man shows and 12 plays. His full-length musical play, Vampires Suck, 
the musical was <laughs> featured in an off-Broadway theater. Many of his one-act plays have been produced in New York City theaters. In addition to his comedy, Stevie is part of a musical parody group called the Retirement Village People, doing songs from the 60s and 70s about the inconveniences of getting older. Audience have been giving them standing ovations. Stevie GB is a comedy queen, friendly comedian and focuses on his life as a married middle-aged suburban man. Maureen Griffin, Miss New York Senior America 2018, a former high school English teacher, has also earned a master's degree in theater arts. Maureen became a professional actress, joining Actors Equity at the age of 33. She has performed in several off-Broadway productions, starring in the romantic comedy Panache, singing and tap dancing in Give My Regards to Broadway, performed in repertory with Light Opera of Manhattan and had leading and supporting roles in Wings Theater Company and Love Creek Productions, to name a few. She has also performed her original one woman show at the famous Don't Tell Mama on Manhattan's Restaurant Row. Maureen and her husband, Curtis, are motor cycle enthusiasts and who have ridden their bikes side by side over 140,000 miles across this beautiful country. Curtis taught Maureen to ride when she was 52 and she loved it so much that she began writing and producing songs about their adventures. They started their own TV show called It's Never Too Late, which follows their motorcycle adventures using Maureen's songs as background. It's Never Too Late can be seen on Cablevision every Wednesday at nine on channel 20. Curtis and Maureen filmed and edited all of their episodes themselves. We can only imagine what they could do with a network behind them. I'd like to welcome again, Norman, John, Stevie, and Maureen and Curtis. Yay! Thank you, Jim. <laughs> and I got we gotta thank Jim and the back engineer as well. The, he's on our board as well. But Jim, um, you know, he had a plays a big connection in connecting us to Norman because uh, and I drew a blank on this before that um, it was from the Village Connection Studio that um, Norman um, and uh, and Jim and I connected and Judy as well. So thank you, Jim in the back studio. We couldn't do it without you and wouldn't want to. <laughs> thank you. So let's 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 kick it off because that's gonna go so fast. I really want to start out with Norman because Norman was the uh, inspiration behind this show and um and entertainment. Norman, tell us uh, I don't need to share with you what you need to say because you're such a professional at at shows. Um, but just share a little bit about yourself and your show and, and how you got into music and your history, because, um, you know, there, there, it's, it's so pa you're so passionate about it. All right. Thank you very much for having me here, Renee, and good morning to my other people that are on. I thank you. Uh, let's start from the top. First of all, a little mistake that um, Judy had read. I do not speak Latin. Oh. I have enough trouble <laughs> speaking English. I can speak Latin, but I do speak disco, Motown, R&B, rock and roll, easy listening, jazz, you name it, we speak. We, we deal, uh, I've been doing this now 35 years, and 90% of my shows are all for charities. Most recently, I just signed with an organization in California. We're going to be doing a series of shows for what's called the Lori Landon Foundation, the Lori Landon Foundation um, helps children uh, around the world and vets here in the United States, States by raise, raising money for them. But um, Lori's big thing is helping the kids in Africa, whether it's e Ethiopia, Nigeria, Ghana, whatever it may be, she's there saving lives. That's what she's all about. And that's what I'm all about. My first concert was back in 1988, where I, when I lived in this small little town 
And I think all our guests will know just where it is. It's called Jericho. Yeah. And living in Jericho, oh, I had my three daughters and they all played Little League uh, soccer and softball and basketball. And dad was a coach and dad was a manager and then dad wound up on a board. And then dad was told that he's now the president of the Jericho uh, Athletic Association. They didn't ask, they just told. <laughs> um, I was going coming home from an oldies doo-wop concert at a local church and uh, that was sold out. And uh, it was a great, great show. And I said to a friend of mine, why don't we try to do this and see what happens? So the board, 15 people strong, plus me, 16 people, we all agreed to go and do it. Um, the show, I'll tell this story and how I learned all about this business. I went through every trial and tribulation that you can as someone that's putting on a fundraiser. It was my first time out. I gave everybody 50 tickets and I said, go sell them. Now, the average ticket sale, by the way, is four tickets per sale. So what am I asking? I'm asking you to reach 17 people, sell four tickets to each person, and we're good. The show back in 1988 cost me $14,000. Ridiculous. Wow. Yes, did I get screwed? Yes, I got <laughs> screwed. I learned all about it. I know how to get around that all now. Um, but when I got done, I made $6,500 back in 1988, wow. and my board never showed up. And my board never sold a ticket. Uh, and that's where I learned how to go and do this. My main business back in the day is I was a headhunter. Uh, I was with a company. I owned a company called Concepts and Staffing. And we were a national uh, staffing firm. And I called up a couple of friends of mine, especially ones that own bus companies in Brooklyn and Queens. We loaded up the buses. We sent them out to Jericho, Long Island. And voila. 35 years later, here I am at Friend Entertainment USA doing concerts, helping charities. Wow. And that, wow. that's what we do. We have I a very just want to program. add something. I'm sorry? Norman, I never knew you had been a headhunter. I was also a headhunter in accounting and finance. Yeah, that's what I did. So we have that that's in what I handled. Yeah, and then I did accounting and finance. That was, that was my baby. That's it. I, I love what it is that I do. I have an extremely large, as Judy said, passion for helping people. Um, I started out when I was 10 years old and my mom died. Music became my best friend. Then my yeah. father died a few years later. And oh I was still wrapped up in all this thing. And, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to see what I could do to help people in any kind of situation that they're in. I wanted to be a lawyer. Then somebody told me I had to go to school. So that ended that, you know, I didn't want to go to school. So uh, now we pushed that on the side. Now I have a lot of lawyer friends. You know, it's like I used to wear secondhand clothes. This true story. I used to, in the winter time, I used to wear woolen pants because I didn't have a pair of shorts. Then I made friends with a guy that had four clothing stores. And it was like, I would walk this. I would give you this and I'll take that and I'll take this. And, you know, life was grand. My, my thing every day is finding a new way to help. Mm. All right. Norman, so I, you would make a wonderful Rotarian. They could use people like you. Yes, I've done shows for the Rotary. I've done shows for the Lions Club, for the Rotary, for, you know, you name it. I've done it. I've hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of concerts. I add some of my shows on the Village Connection with Jim. Uh, he's right. helped us, you know, know, grow and get get the word out of who we are. And I'm just going to put it out there. If you are a charity and you need some help, I don't care how small you are. It does, and I don't care where you are in the country. I can make it happen. Yeah. yeah. You know, can I give off my phone number? Yeah, absolutely. Do, yes. All right. My, my phone number is 631-698-9696. And if you want to reach me, it's Norman at friendentusa.com. And take a look at my website. It's very entertaining. And I have about 40 groups on my talent page that you can actually watch. Wow. And then you can choose. If I can't come to see you because you're not local, you can pick whatever kind of group you want. I negotiate the prices for you so you don't get taken you know, for a ride like I did when I first got started. Yeah. My yeah. job is to raise money for you, not to spend your money. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that, you know I'm I was sorry? gonna say, I know I was gonna say that the truth was that we all need to go through those struggles to learn how appreciate to appreciate what it life's work. all about. 
Right. And, 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 and really the operational struggles too, that you kind of got your feet wet and, and got taken advantage of, et cetera, et cetera. But now, you know, through those um, mistakes, we, we learn how to operate better, you know, and, and yeah, I, I've learned in my life that you need to walk the walk to understand how, how the whole operation functions so that you could be the leader of it like you are now. So, you know, it's, it's interesting that we met on my TV podcast show, which is called the Business Power Hour. Now it's with Lisa and the Music Man, and we go Tuesday nights at seven o'clock. Um, I've been doing this now five and a half years. We now have over 5,300 followers. Wow. I had 4,800 viewers last month wow. to watch this show. And we help people. We take your business. We yeah. put you on air for one hour, as I yeah. did with in, in the Village yeah. Connection. Yeah. One hour, you tell the world what you are all about. You get your message out. And that's yeah. my form of individually helping people grow their business and grow their charity. If you're a charity and would like to be on the show, there's no charge for you. We do not charge you. And you get that same hour and you get the branding and the marketing that comes along with it. And we're here to help. Perfect. Thank you, Norman. Help. Thank you so much. So let's go. I, I want to ask... Um, John, I know you're on, but your video is not on. So if just an FYI, we aren't seeing you. So if you want to be seen, and we hope you do, um, <laughs> please click your video on, okay, so that we could see your beautiful face. He what might be in a post office. Ah. That's well, why he <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Maureen and Curtis, let's hear your story. And Maureen, you know, I know we know you specifically through Judy and Ginny, the the uh, senior New York senior America, right? Right. right. Queen back, uh, what year were you the queen? 2018. 2018. And I looked at you, I, I don't know why, I, I, I was trying to find a photo for press on Facebook and I saw your beautiful photos of when you were queen. You were, I mean, you still are. She still but, is. And, yeah, yeah, but, but, <laughs> yeah. But just, you know, it's different when you get dressed up and you're just your, your, your ultimate self. Uh-huh. You were just, you were stunning. You were, you are stunning. If Chris wasn't there, I would tell her how stunning she is. But, you know, <laughs> He looks like a oh, big guy, so I'm not getting in the way. So. There's no respect at all. No respect. No respect. No respect. No but I, I, on another show, we're going to talk about what happened to Daryl on your show. <laughs> so, um, Norman and um, Norman and Curtis, Maureen and Curtis, what happened? Uh, tell us a little bit about your story. Well, um, we met in our later years. And Curtis rode a motorcycle, and uh, I said, there's no way I'm getting on the back of a bike. And well, I saved you from the leprechaun first. Well, yeah, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> a saved you, but but you can't give that tease and not <laughs> go into, because Stevie GB can use that on his, on his set. He can talk about the leprechaun. So let's hear a little bit of that story. All right. Well, she was dancing with this guy. and uh, He wouldn't leave me alone, and he looked like a leprechaun. So I stepped in. <laughs> He swooped in and he rescued me. And I said, whoever you are, thank you. And I had no, I didn't see his face, but I felt the leather vest. And I thought, oh my gosh, it's a biker. And then when <laughs> the song was over, we looked at each other. And I went, oh, he's kind of cute, but I'm not getting on the back of a bike. So just get that out of your mind right now. Well, he's very charming. And he charmed me onto the back eventually. Uh. And I liked it. So I was scared to death. I mean, just scared to death. But eventually I got to really love it. And I got my own license. And I said, let's go to Florida. Wow. Nice. Uh, we, and we rode all around the country on our honeymoon and took pictures. And so many people on Facebook and so, social media said, oh, we want to see. We love following your trip. And so what we did was uh, two years ago in 2021, we videotaped ourselves on a 5,100 mile trip. Wow. And uh, we saw all the Noah's Ark. We went to all kinds of different things and filmed it. And then when I got back, I edited it and put my music in it. So it's called It's Never Too Late because I didn't start writing until I was 52. Is that the video we have? You have a yeah. clip of, yeah, you have a clip of what yeah, the trailer let's, let's, let's see this video. Let's see this, show this video. I don't think, yeah, um, my, the, the, you know, the, the people that are on the show here, you have to go to Facebook to watch it if you want to watch it right now because you're not going to be able to see it on the screen. So do you want a few minutes to bring up your Facebook or... Um, or you can watch it later on. So go ahead, Jim. I'm a biker, true and proud. Ride an iron horse that's free and wild. A biker, true and proud. That written on scared is not allowed. I may not look so mean and tough, but let me tell you, so I'm no pal to pop. What it takes to ride, well, I got the stuff. I got what it takes to ride. Got what it takes to
Good morning. Welcome to the Fountain of Youth. Whoa! We're going to do a taste testing at the City Gate Spirits and Distillery. We're almost finished with the taste testing. <laughs> We heard about this place from a couple of people. So we're gonna go in. I'm going in. He's so cute. I like to eat. <laughs> it makes me happy. I'm dating a biker. No diets, no cares. Beer and pretzels are the major fair. And we're not sure where we are. I don't think they did the map right. <laughs> it couldn't be that we didn't read it right. Nah. She was so ugly when she walks into the room, the mice jump on chairs. <laughs> well, we got sweat in a little rain. I was riding home at night and all alone. In rain, the pouring rain. And then we found out he gave himself the hole in one. How do you how do you like that? It was, an, <laughs> it was an honest mistake. Yeah, right. Let me tell you something. This is what we do. We, we stop, we see a sign, we say, all right, let's check it out. It feels like Christmas. Yeah. We're actually sitting in Noah's Ark. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had fun, because we sure did. And you never know where we may end up. Ooh. There was a dream, such a dream, just a stare at me. The stage on which I will be. Singing my song, yes, I know before. <laughs> Do we done? All good. Yep. We're yep. done. That is incredible. And you know what? I've learned. You know, I you when I first was an entertainer, I thought I had to be perfect. Like I would go in the st and I would go and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. I really beat myself up to be perfect when I got on the stage. And I think it created a wall between me and my audience. And someone said to me, speak from your heart, just go out, do the best you can, enjoy your entertainment and connect with the people. And that's what this video does. It shows that you just connect with your friend, the followers, the people that want to learn a little bit more about you. So it's, it's an incredible video. It's an incredible People are real and they want to see real life things. Right, right. I agree. And you have to be yourself yeah. in order to do that. Yeah, Curtis, I have a I have a question to ask you because you know the myth behind bikers. Yeah. <laughs> There's yes. a myth. There's a myth. There's a myth that, you know, they're they're rough and they're tough and they're, you know, but what draws you to to want to be a biker? Like what draws you to that crowd? What draws you to that family? Because that is a family. Because you see them, you see them driving in herds around. So what draws you to that? Well, the uh honesty there's no there's no one else you can trust more than a biker okay that's number one we all love riding because of the freedom that it gives you and uh, the feeling of freedom i mean you're, you're you're sitting on a machine that's vibrating and making all this noise and you're going down the highway it's, it's just a thrill you know and then everyone you run across is just a wonderful people we, we took our honeymoon we did uh ten thousand miles we had 20 three states, two countries, everyone, well, there was one person, well, yeah, but everyone we met was so wonderful. And as far as Hollywood's concerned, anything you see on TV and movies, they even made James Dean a bad boy, you know? Right, right. It's a, it's a misconception. Yes, there, there's bad in every group. Yeah, absolutely. You know? and, 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 and we're talking about every group around the world. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what 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 we like to do is, I was part of a, a motorcycle club, and it's one of the oldest clubs in the country, uh, probably the third oldest. But anyhow, um, what we tried always to do was treat everybody with respect. People that weren't bikers, you know, we went to a restaurant or something. 
because we want to change that misconception. Because again, Hollywood will only show you the bad. Mm, mm. Because that, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah, see any yeah. good, wonderful bikers out there on TV doing uh, things for children or raising money for all kinds of funds. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We take veterans rides. We, you know, there's yeah. all kinds of fundraisers that motorcyclists do. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. And, I, yeah, and that's I love, why I want it. Go ahead, Maureen. I, I was going to say, I love what you said about not being perfect because I learned that also. I was it had to be absolutely perfect, and it, it you, you're so focused on that, you, you lose the relationship with the audience. So yeah. this show really helped me, and my music has helped me get out of that. It's like it doesn't have to be perfect as long as your heart's in it and you're having fun. That's part of our message. And you don't have to plan every event. Right. Just oh. go. Yeah, he taught yeah. me that. When you're tired, you look for a hotel. Yeah. I used to plan yeah. everything, but he's like, oh, no, no, no. We stop when we're And we, we, we've we never gotten skunked. We've always gotten something, sometimes miraculously. Oh, yeah. 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 Minor and Valley was one of those yeah. events. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's good. And that's glad. I'm glad that, you know, we're, we help to change the misconception of the bikers and, you know, and you guys. And you, you're both a really a true love story. Um, and you're inspiring people. So that's the thing. I hope you. so. Yeah. We're thank trying. You, thank you. Thank you. Stevie, I know you just sent to Jim and myself, I don't know if Jim saw this, a YouTube video clip via the chat. Yes. If Is it, that okay? If it's, if it's possible to grab that, Jim, could you show it? If not, you don't have to. Let yeah, us it's about know. four minutes, but you can show some of it, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and he said it's a clean one. Yes, this is from Samantha's. It's from Samantha's oh, little okay. bit of heaven, which is all. Oh, I love County. that place, Stevie. Yeah. Just yeah. before we get into your story, yeah. I want to know what what's your concept behind not being clean sometimes? It like what? Why do I'm just I'm curious. Like why do you why do you connect in that direction better with your audience i'm just curious does the audience need that do they grasp that more tell me a little bit about it well you know the funny first of all being clean gets me more gigs because you know i can work temples and churches and parties and <laughs> cooperate and they don't have to worry that i'm going to say anything that will offend anyone that, that's 100 um, percent true so that helps. And and also the funny thing about being clean is for some reason, people think you're a smarter comedian and you're a mm. better writer because you write clean. Like it's harder to write clean comedy mm. and it's easy to be dirty. That's not necessarily true, but if that's a, a perception they have, it's fine with me. You know, I'm not going to argue with them. Uh, I just, you know, I always like to Norman, entertain you're, you're on mute. You're on mute if you want to say something. Norman said something, but he's on mute. I, I want to want to agree with Stevie, but I want to I want to give him an example. Sometimes when I go on stage and I host all my shows, all right, I'm as clean as can be. You know, I look pretty sniffy with my glitter. Imagine this little guy in, in, a, in a glitter jacket and whatever. And I, I want to get a rise out of the people, but they're dead. They're dead. <laughs> they, right. they, they right. think they think they're like in awe. I don't want you to be in awe. All right. So I use the word shit. Uh, what the shit? And they wake up. Yeah. They just everybody <laughs> wakes up and they start clapping and whatever. And that's the end of it. Now I got them. Whatever. Right. So I didn't mean to interrupt, but I wanted to say that sometimes they need to know that you're real. Yeah. And well, that the, you're just like them sitting in the audience. They're, right. They're, yeah. Right. Right. And that the, connects back to what we were all saying about not being perfect and not, you know, um, grasping the audience when, when we're I just human her. beings that's that yeah. that's all we are yeah, yeah. i know maureen will, i know maureen will understand this but when i used to perform in assistant livings um you know i used to do all the holidays as assistant livings because i felt like i was with my children every single day and i really wanted to give back to those i mean i i always remember this one woman for years, I was doing Preakness healthcare on the Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter. And her, she used to draw, bring her, her brother down in a bed every every year just to see me. And that used to, I, I, that humbles me that, you know, just the fact that they would come from, anyway, so, um, well, where was I going with that? I forget what I was saying because they got too emotional. Um, oh, it used, to take me, it used to take me, it really, back to Norman's thing, it used to take me a half an hour to 40 minutes to really get them engaged because they're, they were so like, 
you know, in their own world and the normal thing. And, and honestly, Bobby and I used to do Christmas. We used to do like the Beatles, um, John Mellencamp, um, you know, um, I, I will survive. We used to do like a whole bunch. I, I used to make them laugh because I used to say to them, see, you didn't expect that on Christmas. You didn't expect to be, you know, uplifted and do fun songs. I said, I'll do some Christmas songs, but you know, I want to, I want to en en engage you. I want you to have a good time. So I, I totally agree with Norman on that. So back to you, Stevie GB. I'm sorry to have uh, bothered you. <laughs> That's okay. No. Um, what, what, what else can I tell you? Um, well, tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like I know you're, what do you call your, the, um, the, the funniest accountant or something yeah, like well, that? Yes, the world's funniest accountant. I am an accountant. I know people look at me and think construction worker. I get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I figure if this doesn't work out, I got a future in film, Harry Potter, the golden years. <laughs> That's a great concept. But, uh, you should write that. Yeah, but you know, the truth is I've actually embezzled enough money now to be able to quit accounting and do <laughs> comedy full time. So it, it's working out. I'm wanted in 17 states. So... <laughs> Wanted for that, your for your uh, your best. Let's just, let's just, just leave, to be an entity. Let's just leave that out there. But this is fun doing Zoom comedy. It brings me back to the pandemic. You know, yeah. <laughs> that was wonderful. Um, you know, everybody had bad things to say about COVID. I found some positive things about COVID. Uh, first of all, it got you out of seeing people, right? That you didn't <laughs> want to see. It works. I had COVID seventeen times last year. <laughs> Richard, you know, did you really it, have COVID? It always or worked. Did you say you had COVID? Yeah, it always worked. I'd be on the phone like, oh, sorry, can't come over, tested positive. Yeah. Uh, but listen, tell everybody I said happy Thanksgiving. And uh, while you're at it, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <laughs> yes, I got long COVID. So <laughs> that's my COVID joke. Every comedian has a COVID joke. That's mine. Yeah, yeah. You know what? COVID, um, it was it was devastating. It was you know, I, I can't even share. I mean, I, you know, I remember like, you know, the people sitting outside the hospital rooms with their signs, letting their loved ones know that they were there. Yeah, it was seeing, pretty terrible. Or seeing your grandparents through a window, you know, but, but it did have some positive things, you know. It well, the positive thing, another thing I liked was I liked the women in masks, you know, <laughs> the women in the mask, because it made the nose, the new cleavage, you know, I was always looking like what's under there, you know, what's, what's, <laughs> A little mystery, right? Yeah, a little I never, mystery. I never thought I'd be hoping for a nostril slip, you know, just <laughs> one. L last week, a woman caught me looking and she said, excuse me, sir, eyes down here. So there. <laughs> <laughs> that's as dirty as I get. And that's not even dirty. So but, uh, Jim, Jim is able to show your video, Jim. I'm just oh, showing great. you a minute, a minute and a half. This is old. Hour. This is a few years ago from Samantha's Little Bit of Heaven, where I'm a favorite over there. Uh, but you'll get an idea of what kind of my, my squeaky clean comedy is all about. Okay, go ahead, Thank Jim. <laughs> I'm going to have a problem with that. Hello? Is it not working? Why is that an echo? I thought maybe it was the show, maybe a little bit of comedy. <laughs> no, I'm saying there's an echo. Is there an echo for me as well? Yeah. Yeah, I don't understand why it's doing that. That's really weird. Technical difficulties. Yeah. So um, I'm just having a problem playing the video. Maybe you can go to my YouTube and find it. Would that be easier? Or... Yeah, there's no video. Yeah, Jim, you're echoing, but nobody else is echoing. I see it. Am I echoing, Maureen? No. Okay. I don't hear any echoing. Jim's the only one echoing. Right, so okay. I'm not going to talk. So we can keep going on while Jim plays with the background, as long as we're yeah, not yeah. All echoing. You know, so um, Stevie GB, you know, we love you. You've always been a, been very gracious with our telethons. You've always supported our telethons, and Thank you. we're very grateful to you for your entertainment. You know, <laughs> um, so is uh, is John gonna come on the show? Because uh, he is on the video. He's 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 on, but he's not. He's the, are you coming on, John? Or I just don't want to skip you. 
You couldn't get the video to work, huh? I'm still trying. You're funny, Bart. You're, you're, you're spur of the moment funniness. What can I tell you? <laughs> well, I could do up to an hour. I mean, Norman, give me a call. Uh, we can work together. I'd love to do it. Actually, that. I have I have a very good idea for you and I. Oh, and I wasn't going to bring it up, but my I put up uh, some information in the chat. If you call me, uh, I have an idea. Oh, great! Terrific. I would love to do that. Connections. It's it's a wonderful. Oh, I see it. It's a wonderful thing. You see it? Norman yeah, Wasserman, yeah. the Business Power Hour with Lisa and the Music Man. All right. So, J Judy, why don't you share a little bit about their, your? But I, I got that video. Because you know that you 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 know how much I love music Renee, and Renee. how much I love entertainment, and share a little bit about Renee, why got... you have a passion for you know Norman and Stevie and and Maureen and Curtis and you know why your love for all that. Renee, by the way, I got that video whenever you want. Okay, just wait <laughs> two seconds. Let you <coughs> share hers, and then we'll show the video. Well, music and memory are very important to stroke and aphasia and brain injury people. It brings them alive. And it's very important. I didn't realize that, but when my dad had a stroke, I was playing his 40s music. And I was wheeling him around and I had my tape recorder with music that he really loved. And I played it and I saw him really coming alive with it. And I took him to music and I saw, you know, music, musical shows and I saw how alive everybody became when they heard music. And then I went to a seminar and one of the subjects turned out to be music and memory. And I listened to the man talk and I said, oh my God, that's what I've been doing for my day. I just couldn't believe it. Wow. And I met Renee um, when I heard about her show and related to her and love her music. Stevie GV I met uh, when we were auditioning for a play. And uh, Norman from uh, the uh, Madhouse TV. And Jim, of course, the same. And I love working with Jim. All of you are a terrific team of people that are very enjoyable and fun to be with. Wow. Wow. Just thank you, Judy. Just an FYI, I muted some of you because Jim was saying that someone may have a show playing in the backdrop. Do you have your Facebook up? If you have your Facebook up, that, that could have been part of the problem. I don't know, but Jim's trying to figure it out. So I just wanted to respect Jim. Um, Norman, so let's get back to you, if you don't mind unmuting yourself. I'm sorry I muted you. I just wanted to respect Jim. You're the so, only one that's able to mute me. I am? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I have the special powers. <laughs> Actually, yeah, ask my wife. She'll be the first to tell you. Whose name is also R Renee. Oh, really? Whose name is also Renee. Correct. That's why I have the powers, because my name is Renee. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's... Norman, Norman, I really am proud of the work that you do in helping people. And um, I've been involved in Rotary many years, and I was an assistant district governor for, in charge of five clubs. So I really admire what you're doing, and I think you should become active because you can get a lot of these um, projects going. You know how I get active when people like yourself want to ask me a question? about what it really is that I do. Because what I really do is is raise money, but the main thing about what my business is about is awareness. Yes. I want people to know that there's a charity down the street that really needs your help, but you don't know what they do. So what I, how I make that happen is I put, I, I make these beautiful flyers and and Jim, and Jim will tell you, because he's posted a whole bunch of them. I have a phenomenal graphic artist that I still use for many, many years. And the name, The Temptations, or Gladys Knight in the Pips, or now The uh, the Rolling Stones, which I have booked in June. And what are these brand names that people get attracted to, then they find out who it's for. The first thing they see is the talent, because... It, they want to be entertained. Yeah. That that's what now coincidentally, 
I get the charities up on stage to get to talk about what it is that they do. They set up a table outside. They, they sell within whatever it is that they have. They fill out forms if you want to be a volunteer. They take charities, 50-50 raffles. I auction off cars, you know, not auction off, but well, we also auction off a ticket where you can lease a car for free, you know, oh for two, two, three years. So I, I put that kind of stuff together. My concerts are the focal point, but we build around the concert with other ways to make money and create and create the awareness of that. So I thank you. So if there's a charity like Judy, if you belong to still belong to the Rotary, I can use by example the fact that I did this. I think I'm trying to remember the Stony Brook of Smithtown yeah. uh, concert back about 15 years ago. They made $12,000. Wow. You know, this is a little local show. You know, I've, I've, I've helped charities as raise as much as a half a million. That was for Georgetown University Pancreatic Cancer Research Center in Washington. I didn't know I was being vetted. You know, I did the shows at Queens College. I didn't know people were coming just to see how we produced and what we were all about. And then they asked us to do the show. And, you know, we did. I've also had charities that lose money. Why do they lose money? Because you don't follow the directions. You want to reinvent the wheel. Don't reinvent the wheel. Just leave the wheel alone and it'll take care of itself and it'll roll and it'll pick up speed and, and you'll be doing okay. You know? Yeah. yeah. Did, did we show Stevie Jeeves? No, I, you were going to show it next. Yeah, Jim, that's those, a few minutes, uh, just a minute and a half of Stevie Jeeves' video. This is his, once again, this is his clean video. Go ahead. Really dose. That's great. Uh, I had a big year. I turned 50 recently. Give me a hand for that. 50. Thanks. Six years ago. And, uh... <laughs> 56, it goes fast, it's like 50, I turned 50. I don't remember even saying I was 51, it never happened. I, nobody ever asked me how old I was when I was 51, I never said I was, I just went from 50 to 52, to 54 to 56, it's just like that's how it goes. I didn't, nobody asks, but I do this a lot now. When you get to a certain age, you start looking at other people differently, right? You start looking, I'm like, uh, how old is he? 48? He looks older than me. <laughs> I'm 56, I look 47. He's 48, he looks 59. I'm going with that. And every once in a while, it's rare, but someone might ask me, how old are you? <laughs> I love that. I get to say, how old do I look, right? Yeah. I get 51, sure, I'll take 51. 49, sure, I'll take 49, great. <laughs> Don't get stuck in that conversation with like a 20-something. That happened to me by accident. 20 year old girl, she was like, how old are you? I was like, how old do I look? She gives me that deer in the headlights look. Uh, 62, 62! I'm 56, I look 49, get out of here! 62, it's tough, it's tough. A lot of weird things I notice as I get, you know, getting older. I, I got a lot of junk in my pockets. I just got like, I accumulate just, just stuff. And my young guys walking around, they got maybe the Bluetooth and the iPhone looking cool, skinny jeans. Me, I got, I got keys and gum and phone and wallet and, and coins and tissues and, and tums. I got just junk. Just, and I think it gets worse as you get older. That's why you see old guys walking around looking at me. I can't move. I got all this junk in my pockets. And I can't move here. I'm just loaded with just junk. In it. And you don't believe me. Ask an old guy for change. They pull out $70,000 of dimes and nickels. What do you mean? Quarters, nickels, dimes? I got them right here. Okay? What do you mean? And now every night, every night, I take all this junk out of my pockets. I take it all out. And I put it on my nightstand at night. All the junk, just take it out and I put it on the nightstand. And every morning, I take the same junk off the nightstand and I put it back in my pockets. I put it right back in there. And I walk around with it and I think I need it. I think I'm looking at it. What's that? That's a phone number. I think I might need that. Let me put that back in the pocket. What's this? A coupon from 2002. I think I might need that. Let me put that back in the pocket. Is that it, Jim? So, Stevie GB, where can they go to see your videos? You're on mute. You're on mute. Oh, okay. Um, 
Well, you can go to you. That, that was like a little weird because it was jumpy and it was skipping around and you couldn't hear the audience. Yeah, but on the, on the Facebook end of it, um, it would probably be clean because I'm yeah, watching. Yeah, yeah, it'd be much better. But yeah, you, you can go to my YouTube, Stevie GB Comedy, and I have a YouTube channel or uh, my Facebook, Stevie GB uh, at Facebook. I sometimes I post videos or there's a YouTube link. I have a website, StevieGB.com, where there's a YouTube button and you can see all kinds of videos. Uh, you know, you might see some stuff from the retirement village people I have on there. If you really look, you can find some Groucho stuff that I did. Um, Tell us where everything. you're appearing. Oh, uh, actually, tomorrow night, the 17th, on Monday night, I'll be at the Professor's Cafe Restaurant in Kings Park. I'm there tomorrow night, the 17th. Uh, and then uh, I have a retirement village people show on Sunday, May 7th in the afternoon at the free. I have that. Um, those, those are two, you know, pretty other things coming up. Uh, retirement village people. I have also, um, in, uh, July, it's a little bit further away at the quorum firehouse. So, you know, I'm starting to get some gigs here and there. Well, you've been, how long have you been doing it for, Stevie? Oh, gosh. Uh, officially, I started in 1991, wow. but then I quit for a few years, but pretty consistently for about the last 20, 23, 24 years. Wow. And who's the and Groucho? Show. I'm sorry. No, yes. I was going to say, what inspired you to get into comedy? Actually, it was on a dare. I was, you know, I've always been like funny at work, and uh, somebody at work dared me to go into a comedy contest, and I did it. And I ended up winning third place in the contest. Wow. And wow. after that, I was hooked. And I pretty much have been doing it ever since. Wow, that's wonderful. You're very funny. You're very, you're, you're, you. you're naturally funny. You know, and you find humor in life. In which well, I got that, I got that Larry David voice too. That helps. So, uh, <laughs> I just want to say, pretty, pretty, I just want to say, <laughs> pretty good. I just want to say he was really outstanding as Groucho. And yeah. Vampire Sucks was yeah. fabulous. <laughs> Thank um, you. Everything he did. Well, the Vampire Suck, the whole concept with Vampire Suck is every time you see a vampire movie, they're good at what they do, you know? So I came up with the idea of a vampire that doesn't suck. You know, he's dysfunctional. He can't get the blood out. So if you think about it, he can't even die. So like, that's how miserable his life is. He's starving to death, but he can't die. So he leaves his surreal world of vampires and zombies, and he sees a psychiatrist try to help him suck again, because vampires suck, but this one doesn't. So that's the whole. And then we made it a musical, which was really fun. Oh, and the and the Groucho, he looked so much and sounded yeah. so much like Groucho. It was yeah, well, that was a that was a, a play. It was called Groucho: A Life in Review, actually written by Arthur Marx, Groucho's son. And uh, we did that at uh, Baca over in Lindenhurst. And we ended up on the front page of Newsday. And we sold out like 23 shows in a row. It was insane. Wow. Wow. And I loved it. We did, we did all the songs and scenes from the movies. And I had Margaret Dumont. And it was wonderful portraying. Because he's one of my all-time favorites. So it was great portraying that character. And I, I feel like I nailed it. Everybody seemed to really enjoy it. And I got to do Groucho through the ages. I was young Groucho. Then I was the classic mustache grads during the movie all the way up to the age of 85 when i was the living legend so i went through all the the stages and it was just wonderful to just play that character and it was a lot of behind the scenes about his real life about all his marriages and you know all the troubles and trials and tribulations we even had a a live interactive you bet your life so we did everything it was just wow. people absolutely loved it and i loved doing wow. it that's incredible. We only have a few more minutes, but I wanted to ask Norman um, where he is appearing, and I'm, then I'm going to give Curtis and Maureen um, the last uh, piece of information to share with us. Um, Norman, are you appearing? Are you have any appearances coming up? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I really don't do concerts during the summer, and the reason why I don't is because there's so many free concerts out there, yeah. and I'm, uh, I'm doing it for charities. And me and me and free don't get along, so <laughs> because we don't get along, I I don't do concerts during the summer locally, but I will tell you a story and I'll tell you about the who's going to be performing there. About five months ago, I received a phone call from the Elmont Public Library. I have never done a library in thirty five years because that's a nice really, one. They they really can't afford me, 
and, and the talent that I, that I bring through the door. Um, but this particular gentleman said, well, you want to come down and see the theater? They have a performing arts center. It yeah. holds over 400 people. So I said, you know, we'll give this a shot. So I did a Motown concert. No name. It wasn't, it wasn't the Temptations. It wasn't Gladys. Just Motown. That was my flight. We packed the house. All right. Sold the place out. And I get received a phone call about a week later. And the director offered me seven dates. The director of the theater. So on um, June 19th, we have um, the Rolling Stones. On August, I'm sorry, that's June 24th. On August 19th, we have Barbara Streisand. And if you haven't seen this Barbara Streisand, phenomenal. Interna she travels internationally. Then we're going in after the summertime. We're uh, doing the same theater with Barry Manilow, doing uh, Billy Joel, doing um, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And if you notice, all the, the music, it's different genres of music. These are for different people. All right, so we, we have, like I said, we have 50, 60 type of acts that we can go and choose from around the country. Speaking of which, I'll be in Seattle um, for the Lori Landon Foundation. We're gonna be doing that with Journey. And then we're going down to um, California for her as well in December. And we're doing a, a Latin show. So wow. that, that's basically what, what's coming up. And we're gonna make some negotiations with a whole bunch of other people. And that's it. Thank you for asking. Oh, Appreciate you're welcome. Thank you. You're, you're so welcome. I actually, <clears throat> before I let Maureen and Curtis um, come to the end of the show, I actually want to start focusing on my Latin music because I don't know if you know this, but, you know, half of my, um, I'm, I'm Cuban. Well, doesn't so, Norman speak Latin? I thought Norman said he spoke Latin. No, 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 <laughs> no I, don't I speak, thought I don't he speak did. everything else. I thought he no, did. I wasn't. I wasn't listening. I guess I wasn't listening. I maybe maybe Pig Latin. Somewhere. I might speak Pig Latin, but I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I was so sure I read that. <laughs> so, yeah, so um, because I want to focus on my Spanish music and stuff like that. that. That's one of my passions in life. Um, Maureen and Curtis, share with us what's in the future. You're on mute. Watch in, you have to sh take yourself off a of mute. Um, and what's in the future for, you know, for you guys, if you could share that in uh, 30 seconds or 45 seconds, because oh, okay. we're 10 o'clock. Um, well, you can find all of our TV episodes on my website, uh, Biker Mo, M-O, it's my nickname, bikermo.com. And you can find all of the, the trailers, you can find all the episodes, you can find all my music there. And, it, and if you hit a video, it'll bring you to my uh, YouTube page. And all of those episodes are there as well. Yeah, the music videos as well. Music videos are there as well. And uh, as far as live performances go, um, up here where we are in central New York now, I get asked to sing a lot at charity events, um, especially my song, We the People. Someone heard it and then someone else heard it. And yeah. There's a music video on We the People. Um, you can find that. Wow. And uh, so watch the TV show on Cablevision and uh, Altice. Spectrum Wednesdays nine o'clock channel twenty on cable it is share share it on my Facebook page if you can okay um, and also send me the link so we could support you okay. great right. thank you so much really oh, appreciate you asking us to be on the show today oh my god you're part of our family we got a huge family and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> we're gonna and bigger. open in uh, Shea Stadium or uh, Yankee yeah, Stadium that's and, my vision uh, Yankee Stadium. That's my vision. That's my vision. And they have millions of uh, family members there, yeah, and you're yeah. all included. You're yeah. now all family. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll we'll touch base with all of you about our telethon. Um, once I get over this turkey tray, which is happening this coming Tuesday, then my focus is on the telethon. That's a very major fundraiser. Yes, very major, very major, and a wonderful thing. That's why I haven't had a chance to to call Norman. Norman and I keep missing each other because. This is a huge, huge event. So anyway, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you so much to Judy, of course, for always putting together a wonderful show. We actually have another musical show with uh, Florence, Maureen, and Art. Um, They've actually Rosemary. been part of our telethon as well. Or Rosemary, that's <clears throat> Rosemary, sorry. Um, and uh, thank you so much. And we always will. Thank you to Jim in the studio in Long Island. And we always blow kisses at the end. And everybody, thank you so much for joining us. 
we're just blessed to be able to share this time with you. Um, you know, we hope that we brought a little enlightenment to your day and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful day and have a stroke of luck in your life. And on three, we always blow kisses. One, two, three. Bye, everybody. See you soon. God bless you all. Thank you. Thanks, Judy. Nice meeting you all. Thank you. Bye-bye.